53, which is the second chapter of Megillus Esther. Well, let's just recap. The first chapter tells the story of the celebration. Celebration of what Ahasuerus thinks is the failure of Jewish prophecy that there will be a redemption after 70 years. And he uses it as a uh, means to support the popularity of his being king by showing off his wealth, which means he's not in the pockets of donors, as some kings were, and by supplying everybody with goodies, six-month bash, which is kind of populism that people appreciate, especially the people in Shushan, the capital, where he treats everyone with great, not only with great care and great generosity, but with a respect that goes beyond what you would ex uh, expect from a king cel uh, celebrating and providing people with, with a, with a uh, means to celebrate. Everyone is given exa what exactly want, what he wants, what his own preferences are. And he, in a state of inebriation, tries to engineer a confrontation with the queen which will deprive her of her independent authority, she being a descendant of Nebuchadnezzar. And initially his attempt to pull her down fails. She refuses to appear. And that makes it even worse because now she's made a public statement that she's not subject to him. And his advisor, Nebu Khan, gives him a brilliant way to spin her refusal and to engineer her downfall by interpreting her action as leading an uprising of the women against the men. And Hashverosh's response is a way of restoring and maintaining male control, which then gets the whole kingdom, the whole empire on his side, by which we mean, of course, all the men, that's the whole kingdom, the women don't count. And his, his decree is one which is specifically aimed at supporting the mastery of each man in his house vis-a-vis -vis his wife. The excuse for it is, is, uh, is Vashti's refusal, Vashti's rebellion. You paint a rebellion as a stab of feminism in the direction of the independence of all women for all men. Surely that's not what she had in mind. She didn't care about the women in the kingdom. I don't think she cared about the men in the kingdom. She had the royal blood flowing in her veins. She didn't need anybody. That was her, her position. But you paint it that way, and then you make the decree one which specifically says every man should be king in his own house and rule over his wife, and that way you get people to, to support it. Um, and the decree is that she is no longer queen and should never come before Hashverosh. The oral tradition says he has her killed. But um, even without that, with the straight verses in the text, it's a brilliant victory for Hashverosh, depriving, ridding him of, not depriving, ridding, ridding him of someone who could be a potential competition for authority. That's what happened in chapter 1. Well, we have an oral tradition, and the oral tradition gives us information that's not in the text. But maybe I didn't explain this well. Um, there's a point in understanding what the text says by itself, and then there's another point in adding the oral information and getting a fuller picture. There's a reason why the author of the text didn't put that in. They left it oral. Because you could understand the story on a certain level, 
just on the basis of what's written. To get a fuller picture, you'd have to add in all the oral material as well. I'm teaching the text. And so, where, does this, where in the text does it, uh, like with which uh, Pashtun? Are we on where it says this? Where it says what? The thing about Pashtun. That she's removed from being queen? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's. Um, Verse 19. You're welcome. Okay, now verse two start, uh, chapter 2 starts. After these things, when the wrath, which means anger, of King Hashverosh subsided, he remembered Vashti. Now when the text says after these things, you know, we assume that the, the events are told in order. So, after these things means not just it happened later, but as a result of. It means what we're going to, the, sh the events we're going to tell you in chapter 2 depend upon chapter 1. You can't understand what's being told in chapter 2 until you take chapter 1 into account. That isn't obvious. That isn't always the case. And not always when you go from event to event does the text, this text or other, other texts that our tradition say after these things. So here, and we'll see this immediately. Now, reading it literally, and my, my suggestion to you is when you read any of our texts, and you read it in English, which should cause you to be suspicious that you're not getting it, or even if you're reading it in Hebrew, the first thing you should do is read it like a 10-year-old who has a dictionary and just reads the words and takes them for at face value. Try. Try to read it that way. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it becomes very difficult to understand. That's good. So then when it's difficult to understand, you know you need some kind of deeper understanding because it doesn't make sense as it's written. So let's try this. After these things, when the wrath, the anger of King Hashverosh subsided, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what had been decreed against her. Hmm. After these things, he remembered. Does that mean in between he forgot? Forgot. Gee, I haven't seen Vashti around for weeks. I wonder where she is. Is she in Acapulco running up the credit card? Oh, 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 slipped my mind. Yes, we got rid of her. Probably not, right? <laughs> That's not a credible way of reading the text. So here... Um, Hal says this by implication, but here's an example, example of it. The word in Hebrew, liskor, doesn't mean exactly remember. Because if it meant remember, you would get this absurd text. Liskor in Hebrew can mean to make a present decision on the basis of past facts. Without implying any forgetting in between altogether. And that's clearly what it means here. After these things, Ahasuerus is now deciding to get a new queen. Up for some period of time, he didn't have a queen. Now he wants a queen. So taking into account all the things that happened, and as you'll see, the way in which he goes about getting a queen takes into account all the details of what happened before. That's just a whim. So remember here means... He's now acting on those past facts in a practical way. Okay, but as we said, everything he does, he does from advisors. Because he's not of the royal blood, he didn't grow up in the royal house. How do you go about getting a queen? What, what, what will be acceptable in the eyes of the population? Because he's desperate for popular support. King's... Pages, now let's see what they, what they write here in, in the Hebrew, probably is, yeah, uh, you know, in ancient English, a page was somebody you sent to give a message to somebody. These are his servants. They're his youth, Nare Hamelech Mishar Sov, the people who serve him. There's no reason to write page here, absolutely not. They said, here's how you ought to do it. Let there be sought to the king Beautiful young maidens. 
uh, and here the word, I don't know how, what, what the English reader reads when he hears maiden, but in English it means virgins. And let the king appoint commissioners in all the provinces of his kingdom that they may gather together every beautiful young maiden to choose in the capital, to the harem. Now, harem also... Harem in English has, has um, associations which isn't in the, in the English, in the, in the Hebrew. Beis HaNashim means just a place for women to dwell, a separate place for women to dwell. Harem, I think, in English implies that they're, they're his wives. They're not his wives. They are candidates, candidates in training, as you will see. Under the uh, authority of this fellow, Hegel, He's the one who is responsible for guarding and protecting the women. And their cosmetics should be given to them. Now, cosmetics in, those ta- in, the, in the Tanakh's usage impl- includes principally perfumes, not just uh, eyeshadow and blush and so forth and so on. And the young woman, girl, who pleases the king should be queen in place of Ashti. This advice pleased the king and he followed it. Now, I think we can see a connection here between what happened with Ashti and the, and the advice of the, of the advisors. The advisors here also are very clever. We're going to gather together what kind of girls? Beautiful girls. Just beautiful. That's all. Not smart, not accomplished, not talented, not rich, not experienced. Just beautiful. And not queens. I'm sorry? And not queens. Not queens. Like when you say just beautiful, did you want a queen or is that... I'm sorry, he's going to choose one of them to be queen. No, I'm thinking about Vashti because she had like queen blood. Oh yes, of course. That's one part of the idea that that uh, Esther is gets into the into the into the group here because nobody knows who she is, okay. and the commentators comment on this whether if if they had known that she herself comes from royal lineage, whether that would have disqualified her. What does he want? No competition. No competition. If she's chosen as queen, you know why she's chosen. Because she's beautiful. And beauty is in the eye of the beholder. She pleases me. She pleases me. What needs to happen in order for her to be kicked out? She doesn't please me. She's there only on my whim. That's what the king wants. That's what the advisors understand. This is the absolute guarantee that there'll be no competition whatsoever. If she picks her head up, she's out. So you see him making sure that he's not going to go through what he went through with Vashti. This woman has only one qualification that that earns her the position of queen. She pleases the king because she's good looking. Indeed, that's how the challenge to Vashti was, was, was made. What did he say? Let her come because he wants to show off her beauty to the assembled guests. That's his way of putting her down. That's a way of saying, you're only here because you're beautiful. And she said, drop dead. I'm here because I'm beautiful. I'm here because I'm, a, I'm the granddaughter of the, of the emperor. You need me. You're not legitimate without me. That's why it was a challenge. So here, the advisors who understand his mentality very well, they say to him, this time, enforce it. Make it clear in the gathering that that's all you're looking for. Make it clear in the choice that it's only because of the fact that she pleases you because she's beautiful and nothing else. Okay. Now, at this point, the text introduces the main, really the main character in the whole, in the whole story. There was a Jewish man in Shushan, the capital. His name was Mordechai, son of Yair, son of uh, Shimi, Son of Kish, a Benjaminite. That means from the tribe of Benjamin. What 
Why is that important? Is it important? Benjamin? Yeah, that, that he's coming from Benjamin. We'll see. We'll see. When we, when we come to Haman. And remember that the, the, the lineage is traced back specifically to the tribe that he comes from. We have been exiled from Jerusalem along with the exiles, exiled with Yoachin, Yehonia, uh, king of Yehuda, from Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had exiled. Okay. Now, he reared Hadassah. He, you know, she was under his charge. He brought her up. That is Esther. Oh, she has two names, Hadassah and Esther. Having two names is not terribly uh, unique. Yaakov had the other name of Yisrael, right? And he's the third patriarch. Um, Yisro had several names, Moshe's father-in-law. Moshe himself, the oral tradition preserves. This Yisro having, having several names is in the text. He's described with different names. Um, Moshe had Hebrew names. They just didn't stick. The only name that, he, that stuck with him is what the name that Bas Paro gave him. She had two names. And that she's introduced here as having two names. So that's important. These two names have to tell us something. He reared Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter. So if Esther is his uncle's daughter, he, Mordechai, and Esther are first cousins. In Jewish law, first cousins can marry. They can or they can't? I'm sorry, say again? They can. They, they can. Okay, yeah, yeah. They can marry. I'm not getting it. Yes, if they can marry the first cousins. They can. They can marry, yes, right. Um, <clears throat> now, why did Mordechai raise her? Since she had neither father nor mother. She was an orphan from an early age, from both her father and mother. So here is first cousin. He's her first cousin, and he raised her. He was older than she, and he raised her. How much older? We don't know. Not in the text, anyway. The girl was finely featured and beautiful, and when her mother and father had died, Mordechai adopted her as his daughter. Now, that's what you have in the English. Lord Mordechai, now the, the, the text, first of all, this whole sentence is unnecessary. We know that he's raising her, so we know all of this. But it says, Lekacha, Mordechai, he took her, that's a word which is used commonly for marriage, and then he took her, Lebas, as a daughter. I mean, Oshkan Shalo, I mean, it's not more or less than what we had for before. This is my oh. insulin pump, which is yelling at me because I didn't do something. No, I, I don't need something. What I need is what I forgot to do at home. I'll manage without it. It's not, not gonna, not gonna, I'm not in danger. Thank you. Now, I just want you to know that in the oral tradition, there is an opinion that he married her. <coughs> don't say took her for a daughter. Bas, say he took her for a bias, for a house. And a house is a way of referring to your wife. <coughs> so, we have to uh, we have to understand that the whole story has to include the possibility that he married her. Now, this is background. In other words, the first paragraph told us where the king is holding. He's holding by finding a queen, by scouring the whole kingdom, 127 provinces, for beautiful girls. And now we're told one of the girls in the province is Esther, who is under the care of Mordechai and perhaps married to Mordechai, but secretly. Because he brought her up from a young age. He took her in as an orphan and brought her up. 
And if they married, they married secretly. It wasn't public knowledge. So it came to pass, verse 8, when the king's bidding and decree were published, uh, publicizing the search for beautiful girls, one of whom will be queen, when many young girls were brought together to Shushan the capital under the charge of Haggai, that Esther was taken into the palace under the charge of Haggai, the guardian of the women. Because... She, too, was beautiful, and it wasn't known that she was married. The girl pleased him. Now, this guy, hey, guy, he's, by, by, he's described as a cerise. A cerise means a person who's castrated. It's good to have a castrated man in charge of the women, isn't it? Right? Otherwise, being in charge of the women in Persia could give a man ideas, right? But here's a guy who can't, who can't do anything, so... You know, and they and it was, uh, it's the, it's a phrase that's used over and over again. And to have people around who don't have that problem, vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the kingdom. The girl pleased him. And he's bringing in these beautiful girls from all over, from 127 provinces. And you'll see, we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of girls. She somehow pleased it. Now, in Hebrew. Batisa Chesed Lefanov. Okay. She was good in his eyes. And she brought out kindness in him. And because of that, he... The, one of the things they did, as you'll see, they, they, they prepared the girl for the encounter with the king by beautifying her, some of which was anointing her body with oils and perfumes for a whole year. Um, and he, when we say in Hebrew, he's makbid, he, he uh, took, he, he told the people who are in charge of this process of beautifying the girls, pay attention to this one. Pay attention to this one. I want you to give her special attention. Cosmetics, and the allowance of delicacies. Now, delicacies sounds to you like food, but monos can be food or it can be any items that are necessary for her well-being. And he gave her seven young girls as her servants from the house, from the from the king's uh, possessions, and he. Hegai, Hege, he um, made her distinguished, different from all the other girls and all the other that were under his care. He treated her specially. Now, um, there's no indication whatsoever here that she did anything to provoke this. She's one of hundreds and she was good in his eyes and she called out kindness in him by just being there. And he transferred her and her maidens to the best quarters in the harem. Well, for the, the base notion, the place where the women were, uh, were, uh, pl were placed. Esther had not told her of her people or kindred, for Mordecai had instructed her not to tell. Now, some of the commentators say what we mentioned before, that uh, she comes from royal, from royal, uh, fa royal family, royal, royal lineage. Mordechai was under the impression that if her royal lineage will be known, that will be a reason that he should choose her. Because he's choosing her to be king, and she comes from royal lineage. If, if, and that be, if that's the case that Mordechai misunderstands Ahasuerus, which could happen. From my point of view, it certainly could happen. He thinks that... What's going on here? Is my phone ringing? Oh. I see. Somebody's been trying to call me. One second. Oh. 
Okay. I'll call him back later. Um, he, Mordechai thinks that if it's known that she is she comes from royal lineage, that would that would influence the king to pick her, because someone like you said before, like someone with a, with a, a queen's uh, with a king's lineage would be appropriate for him. Would would give would enhance his 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 kingdom. The truth is, is the exact opposite. By keeping her quiet, that makes it more likely she'll be chosen. And here is a feature of, of Jewish thought that you have over and over again. That you have a plan, and you have a way to ensure the plan or to make to push the plan forward. And unbeknownst to you, you are pushing forward because Baruch's plan, which is not your plan at all. You think you are going to avoid what a Kodesh wants to be the outcome, and you are doing the exact opposite. Because Baruch wants her to be chosen. You think you are helping prevent her from being chosen, and no, you are actually making more likely that she'll be chosen, because had a Kodesh known that she had royal lineage, he wouldn't have chosen her at all. He doesn't want to repeat of the Vashti competition. This is a very common, and you'll see that it happens to Haman as well. Wait, Mordecai does want Esther chosen? No, no, he certainly does not. So why didn't Mordecai tell Esther to say that she has royal lineage? Because he thinks that her having royal lineage will influence Ahasuerus to yes choose her. Oh, because he, he misunderstands Ahasuerus' criteria. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, every day, Mordecai used to walk about in front of the court uh, of the courtyard. I don't know, they, they, they call it a court. It's not a court. It's a chatzer. Chatzer is a, is a, is a, it's a courtyard of the base of Nashim, the place where the women were kept, in order to find out about Esther's well-being and what would become of her. Not clear from the text how he would find out. Uh, there was communication via from some of the girls that he gave her, that, that she was given, the servants she was given, so they could, keep, could, could, could communicate with one another but they couldn't stray too far, so he came there to find out. And by the way, don't pay attention to the paragraphs in the English. Just look at the Hebrew. The Hebrew text in the Art School uh, Library reflects the actual divisions of the Hebrew text. So that's a place to look. And as you see, this is all one block of text all the way down to three quarters of the way down the page. Wait, Rabbi, what's, what's Mordecai's intention at this point? Is he, he simply doesn't want Esther to be selected? That's where he stands mentally with respect to the progression of events here? For sure he doesn't want her to be selected. But that's it. Like, as far as we know, that's, that's Mordecai's state of mind. I mean, he also is concerned for her welfare during the whole process. Mm -hmm. She is, after all, keeping Shabbos, and she's not eating any food. And like you know, she's, you know, she's 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 strict. And she's doing what she's doing. Okay. And uh, the hey, Gid, just she looks beautiful and she's charming. If if she's chosen, like any one of the ones that he has, he's chosen. Then he's done his job and it's been a success. And and he'll be thought of well. You know, that's that's what that's what he has in mind. <coughs> Now here's the procedure. When each girl's turn arrived to come to King Ahasuerus, after having been treated according to the manner prescribed for women for 12 months, there was a 12-month process that these women were put through, for so was the prescribed length of their anointing, that means treating their body with oils, six months with oil of myrrh, six months with perfumes, Feminine cosmetics. Thus the girl came to the king. She was given whatever she requested to accompany her from the base of Noshim, the women's residence, to the palace. Any clothes, any particular perfumes that you want, any jewelry, whatever you want, this is your one shot at becoming queen. You know, we have a lot of resources here. Name, name your, uh, you know, your implements. In the evening she would come, and the next morning she would return to the, the second place of <coughs> where the women were kept, in the custody of Shashgaz, because now she's had relations with the king. Now she functions as one of the harem of wives in the way that we normally understand that. This has a different person who's in charge, 
Shashgaz, not Hege. It's in a different place. And of course, once she's had relations with the king, she can do no, nothing else. She's just available to be re- there whenever the king wants her, as, as, it, as it, kings, the king's servant, guardian of the concubines. She would never again go to the king unless the king desired her, and she was summoned by name. She becomes on the roster of the king's wives. So that was the procedure. Now, when the term came for term came for Esther, daughter of Abichai, uncle of Mordechai, who had adopted her as her own daughter. Now, according to the one who says that this is a subtle reference to the being married, it's very logical that it should be put in here. Reader, pay attention, she's married! So, this is a gigantic tragedy. She's married, and she's going to the king to be, to be, have relations with somebody else. That wasn't the plan of the, of the gathering of the girls. The plan was that they should all be virgins unmarried. In other words, the king wasn't looking to interfere with, with marriages. He wasn't looking to brutally take other men's women. No, he was looking for a, a woman who's unmarried and un, unexperienced, and, so, and, and he'll choose her, choose her for himself. Not trying to do something that would, that would cause an uprising. Remember, he's desperately afraid of his popularity. And so he's certainly not going to take married women. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to understand. It doesn't seem sustainable King's trying to look for a new queen, and he tried to look for the most beautiful woman in the land. And now he's, he's trying to go out of his way to make them even more beautiful. It's not, it, whatever the process that they're being put in for a whole year is not sustainable. It's not going to be like that forever. Why not? She's queen. She can have whatever she wants. All the oils and all the perfumes and all the cosmetics and everything else, she can have them in, for the rest of her life. So she's expected, if that 12-month thing, is to get her to the level of how she's supposed to be as queen forever. I would imagine so. I mean, he's choosing her only because she's beautiful. She's given 12 months to make herself as beautiful as possible. She wants to stay there. He better stay beautiful. I would imagine that's correct. And how did, what was the thing that made King Ahasuerus feel like, pay attention to this specific one? Because he had, because he had, the pay attention, pay attention to what specific? To Esther. Well, we haven't gotten there yet. We're, we're coming to that. We'll see. This wasn't the Kasrit. We're talking now about the man who's in charge of guarding these oh, women. Hege. His name is Hege. He's, in, he's the one who was impressed by her and made her different and made sure that the ones who provide the cosmetics gave her special attention. And they didn't know that she was Jewish. Right. They didn't know she was related to Mordechai. It's a name, Mordechai. And her name is Esther, which is also not Jewish. Who knows what Persian name they, they, she gave them? Good point. Okay. She was definitely taking every measure to, to hide her identity. So, verse 15. <laughs> when the turn came for Esther, daughter of Eichel, who had adopted her as her own daughter, and that's, a, as I said, if that's a subtle reference to the fact that they were married, that comes in here, the, the, this safer, to a great extent, is melodramatic. It doesn't leave much to your imagination. You don't have to figure things out. It makes them prominent and will emphasize them. So, to come to the king, she requested nothing beyond what Hege, or Hegai now they call him, the king's servant, guardian of the women, had advised. She plays an entirely passive role. And all the verbs that apply to here are nifal. They're things that happen to her, not things that she does. Even linguistically, she plays an entirely passive role. She's, it's happening to her. Esther would captivate. There's no word in Hebrew for captivate. Let's see what the, what the Hebrew writes. I don't remember it that well. Tesla. We get to Esther. Big show, lover. Swiss. No says chain. Now, 
Chen is a kind of charm. Um, it's where you, you'll, you'll look at someone and be attracted to the person. If somebody asks you, what in the person is attracting you? The answer is, I have no clue. I have no clue. I just find the person attractive. It's, it's something you can't define. That's, that's the idea of chen. Um, in the eyes of all who see her, that's why in English the word charm is not bad. Um, and um, it, it too, you know, if you, you say, why, why do you like that person? Why do you like to associate with that person? I don't know, I just find the person charming. That could disappear in a second. If it was the person's courage, or the person's brilliance, or the person's kindness, that has a certain stability. Unless the person's characteristics and their behavior change, that has a certain stability. But if it's a, I don't know what, that, that, that captivates me, that could change instantly. Because you know, there's nothing to define what it is. So again, if that's the, the basis of the choice, it has maximum insecurity. I used to find you charming, and now I don't. Bye. <laughs> Which is what he wants. He wants maximum insecurity. Esther was taken to King Hashverosh into his palace. Tenth month was one of the Tevis in the seventh year of his reign. Now let's figure this out, boys and girls. The seventh year of his reign and the original ev event took place in the third year of his reign. That's four years later. How much time went by between <laughs> the party in which uh, Vashti was deposed and the time in which he started searching for a, for a queen? We don't know. The normal thought is some months. So you have four years, or maybe a little more, depending on what the, 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 the months were, four years, one girl a night. That's over a thousand girls. But what does he care? He's rich. He can sustain all of them. They go into the harem, right? And this went on for almost, for almost something like four years. Then it's Esther's turn. The king loved Esther more than all the women, which means that he wasn't disgusted with all of them. Some of them attracted his fancy. Some of them were pleasant. Some of them he liked, but not enough. Esther was superior to all the others, and she won more of his grace and favor Let's see the check the Hebrew word what's going on here. Uh, but you have a message Tisachain, that's charm, and kindness before him. More than all of the virgins. So now the careful reader has to say, wait a minute. In this verse, we have reference to virgins and before that to women. Why are there two references? And why are there two different words being used? And the answer is that at a certain point, talking about a thousand females, right? At a certain point, they widened the scope. Not just virgins. Now, nowhere do we have any indication that he interfered with people's marriages, but you could have widows. You could have divorcees. You could have, you know. It broadened out and the competition was a bigger range and more difficult competition. And still, the, uh, Esther was like incomparable. <coughs> and the king put the crown of the queen on her, on her head and made her queen in place of Vashti. Now, here too, Vashti was there, Vashti got pushed out, and now Esther is queen. What do you gain by saying in place of Vashti? It means you have to have what Vashti was in mind, and the kind of relationship that you have with Vashti in mind, and you have to understand that she's being put in place of that. 
In place of that, given everything that I've told you, doesn't mean to do what she did, to fill her shoes, but on the contrary, to be very different from her. Instead of the Vashti competition, I have the new queen who will be totally subservient, totally dependent, and totally insecure. It's fulfilling what the king wants. Okay, now, there was a, a celebration, a banquet. Who makes the banquet? Look, the king made a great banquet for his officers and servants, Esther's banquet. Remember what happened when he made his party? Vashti made her own banquet. In the king's palace, she made the banquet. Uh, uh, not Esther. She does nothing. Sorry. She does nothing. The king makes a banquet for her. Fine. She has no independence, no authority, no, no independent action. She's just a bauble. She's a, a, uh, a, 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 you know, something to dangle in front of, to dangle and show her, show her beauty. Of course, she's not going to do it the way, the way uh, he wanted the Bashi to do it either, but still. And he proclaimed an amnesty for the provinces, meaning he forgave debts for the provinces and gave gifts worthy of the king. Why is he doing this? Why is he showing such largesse? Do you say he did it to pop popular uh, favor uh, because we said he was afraid of his, of his popularity? Yes, that, that's part of his motivation. But that's only part of his motivation. And the proof of it is the next words, which again is not a separate paragraph in the Hebrew. And when the maidens were gathered together the second time. What? Maidens were gathered together the second time? Why? For what purpose? He's found Esther. She's charmed him. And she's, she, he finds, and she, he calls out, she, she calls out kindness in him. Why are they gathered together a second time? And Mordecai sat at the king's gate. Esther still told nothing of her kindred or her people as Mordecai had instructed her. For Esther continued to obey Mordecai just as when she was raised by him. That's the end of the paragraph in Hebrew. What's the, what's the connection? Well, how do the ideas develop here? He, the king marries her. He makes a banquet. He gives gifts and amnesty. He forgives, uh, forgives debts. <coughs> and gathers versions again into, uh, into, into the capital. And Mordecai sitting at the gate. And... Esther doesn't tell who her, what, her, what her background is, who her identity is. It's all one story. The king wants to know who she is. He wants to know who she is. She says not a word. He asks his advisors, his, his shabak, you know, his secret police. Nobody knows who she is. He's going to have her as queen because he can't, he can't, he's infatuated. He's, he's, he's gripped, but it bothers him. Who is she? So here's his plan. His plan is, I'm going to find out because I'm going to trigger the people who know to talk. I'm going to make this a cause célèbre. The whole kingdom, 127 provinces, are going to be talking about it. I'm forgiving debts. I'm giving out gifts throughout, throughout the kingdom. Everybody's going to be, someone will spill the beans. Someone will, will say, oh, oh, look at that. That's that girl from over there. She's to quit. Not a word. Not a word. So then he says, okay, I'm going to frighten her. We gathered virgins the first time. She's a king. She's a queen, right? Uh huh. She's going to see a new gathering of virgins into the capital. And she's going to think, well, I'm not doing what he wants. He wants me to tell him who, he is, who I am. And he's not doing what he wants. What he wants. So he's thinking of getting a new queen. He's trying to frighten her. Nothing else. Nothing else. Now, how do I know this? I know this because later on, when it comes to the banquets, she says to the king before the second banquet, I want you and Haman to come to the second banquet, and tomorrow at the banquet, I will do the king's bidding. I will do what the king wants. Really? Uh-huh. What does she do that the king wants? What is it that the king wants that she hasn't been doing? The next day, she identifies herself. She says who she is. So that's how I know that this is what's going on over here. Because he wants it and he's been 
influencing you, trying to do it. He has a plan and be giving gifts and so on and so on to, and to bringing the new, new versions in to frighten, frighten her. He really wants this. And she says, no. And then she says, okay, finally I'm going to do it. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah. So you, you can see that the text is connected and what, what we'll see that later. You'll see that's the key to, to understanding what's going on here. And she is, she's hiding her identity because Mordechai said so. That's the way, that's what, um, what, um, and, and uh, according to these commentators, you know, Mordechai is sort of, he's sort of shooting himself in the foot and doesn't know it. Because if he would reveal her, 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 her identity, then, then could be that it would end, that would end it. Because he does, as we said, the king doesn't want to be uh, faced, <coughs> with, faced with competition and independent authority. Okay, that's almost to the end of chapter uh, chapter two. We'll pick it up again tomorrow in session.